Jurassic Park for a minute, where we'll be discussing the second Jurassic Park sequel, one minute at a time. I'm Brad, and back to venture through Jurassic Park for me is uh, Dave. Welcome back. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> good, man. Good. You wanted to uh, hang around, go headlong into uh, Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. Which is great, because you are a wealth of knowledge, especially on location shooting and that for the uh, films mm-hmm. and some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, so it's definitely great to have you on board again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. F Times, being international, me in Australia, and you in not East Coast America, but close to the East Coast, it's... Um, it's sort of hard getting times to line up, but we will if uh, anyone's keen to come on and guest. Uh, we've had Jay on in the past, and he's going to come back again in the future. If anyone else does want to jump on board and talk about Jurassic Park for and the rest of the franchise, um, just shoot us a shoot us a message, and uh, we'll see what we can work out. Mm-hmm. Does anyone have a question that does not relate to Jurassic Park or the incident in San Diego, which I did not witness? Today, we are here for uh, the inaugural episode of Jurassic Park 3 Minutes, uh, where we're going to have a bit of a look at the trailers and uh, some of our initial thoughts on uh, Jurassic Park 3. But before we get to that, we've got some figures and some items that have uh, been coming in to uh, just to fill this little gap from what we used to do on the Lost World Minutes. David, you're uh, expanding the library. Library. I am, yeah. <laughs> library. <laughs> I've got... What's that? <laughs> library. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I finally um, went out and, or not finally, I, um, I'm i slowly completing the, the that little uh, encyclopedia book things, the numbered books. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally completing, or not finally completing, but on my way to completing uh, those, I've got two, three, five, six, and seven, so I've got three more to find. The T-Rex and the... Uh, and the Velociraptor ones are the two I've, I think I'm going to have the most hard time finding just because those are the two most popular characters in the franchise. Yep. And, of course, I um, recently changed jobs, so that was a little hard <laughs> on my wallet. I feel but you, man. <laughs> I made things work. <laughs> You've still been able to get a few things in anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, and one one thing I, I almost forgot, I, uh, I wanted to mention it on... Um, the Fallen Kingdom special, but we never got to toy talk. Mm. It was a long <laughs> show on its own. <laughs> yeah, it was. But I actually got the 3D diorama for the Lost World Jurassic Park official soundtrack. Oh, wow. It, it's, it's smaller than I expected it to be, but it's no less beautiful than I... It's even more beautiful than I thought it was. Mm. I mean, it's just amazing, these little tiny tabs you stick out, and it's just like amazing how all this folds up into a standard official soundtrack uh, case, you know? Mm. Yeah, back in 97, I didn't... I can't recall having any of the figures um, as much as Lost World was the centre of my world... (laughs) centre of my life back then. Um, I can't even recall if I've seen any figures in the toy shops, but um, that that case, seeing... buying that case at a local CD shop, um, having the score... that score I was playing every day and having that that fold-out case or diorama was just fantastic. It's it's still one of my... I've still got the original one from then. Um, I've since purchased one that's still sealed, but it's still one of my favourite possessions in my collection at the moment. Yeah, I, I remember getting uh, CD shops. There was one, there was like a record store slash CD shop called the Crow's Nest uh, down the street from me when I, uh, when I was growing up. It's gone now, long gone. Yep. But it had, like, all kinds of taxidermy sharks all around it, so that's kind of one of the reasons I liked it. And it had all these weird, obscure movies. And looking back now, I remember it had bongs and all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. I mean, I never... I assumed it was for smoking tobacco. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's probably not what it was used for, though though it does say on the package, intended for tobacco use only. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you sort of, you know... (laughs) We've talked before about uh, hot topic and stuff like that, where um, when once they start getting in all sorts of other things away from their main line of what they're selling, you know they're sort of on the way out. <laughs> in CD shops, yeah, as you said, as soon as they start getting bongs and pop vinyls and all that other stuff in, then you know they're they're struggling to keep their business yeah, afloat. This was like a record store as well, so it was kind of that was kind of 
their clientele at the time. You know, they had all kinds of bad, like really bad B movies. I remember getting my copy of Jaws three there, <laughs> really bad eighties three D movie with the with Dennis Quaid in it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like uh... my favorite part about it though was because it, I liked the Parent Trap. Yep. And it had Dennis, and I liked that, so I, therefore I liked Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I've I've only picked up one thing. Oh, I picked up a couple of things actually. Uh, I got a friend of mine who um, has a friend of, over in the states and uh, does some purchasing for him. I got the Legacy Raptor, which is the mm-hmm. uh, orange. Some would say the Lost World color, but I'd say more of a um, Crichton original of what the original Raptors may have looked like in Jurassic Park before they are sort of muted a little bit. But oh, my copy is more orangish. It's kind of like a fiery orange, but... Yeah, especially in the arms. The arms take me straight back to that electronic screaming raptor in Jurassic Park, the toy line, but... Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, mine, it's sort of got those hints of orange on it, but it's sort of, especially when you turn it upside down, it's more, more of that white or cream colour. The sculpt the sculpt itself and just the head and the, the articulation in the head, I absolutely love, but we've I've, I've especially have come on here and loved everything that Mattel's done so far. Um, this raptor, <laughs> I... It might be just this one, but the legs, I can't get the legs to go back. And No, no, it leans forward. Yeah, and then you Very can't... Much. Yeah, and then you can't sort of get the head to come up high enough to even be in a crouching snarl position. No, yeah, this but, is kind of like the only downside to it. Yeah, but I think my biggest issue with it is just the size of the feet. I know they, they wanted to make sure they could stand and not do the same as what uh, Hasbro did with the... Raptor Squad four pack and that where they were missing the inside toe and had very small contact surfaces with the ground, but they didn't need to be this big. It's that's the well, size I, of its head. <laughs> I think it also has to do with the fact that it. Um, I think it also has to do with the fact that it's supposed to be kind of balancing for the feet and the jumping mechanism. Oh, it jumps does it? Uh, oh. Yeah, you. You put the you put the legs down and put it kind of like in a tripod position. Pull it, uh, push it down, and it hops. Like oh, a raptor. okay. It's actually kind of fun. Yeah, I, yeah, I can feel the spring load in the legs here now. Yep. yep. But um, yeah, got that. He had the uh, the legacy Jeep as well. But looking at it compared to the uh, the Jeep with the Dimorphodon capture. It's essentially the exact same Jeep except for the launching mechanism on the roof. And for the price of the Legacy Jeep, yes, it's got the working winch on the front, but for the price of it, I'd just prefer to get the the Dimorphodon captured Jeep and just push the pin out and remove that launcher from the top of it, especially if you're going to buy multiples of that Jeep. Um, so I didn't I didn't get that off him, but I also got the, uh, the original Jurassic Park annual, the hardcover version. All right was good just to go back. Yes, all, most of the puzzles have been done by someone, which it's very it's very hard now finding some of those early books, puzzle books and that, that haven't had the puzzles done or scribbles and all that through them, but it adds character to the piece, and it's just it's just great going back and seeing a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff and, and that sort of stuff with the film, so they were uh, two little things I got this week, or this, the past couple of weeks. Do you remember the sounds they made? I try not to. Is my name Alan? Is my name Alan? <laughs> you used to know me. Jurassic Park 3, 2001. Dave, as I said before, coming out of Lost World for a couple of years post-Lost World, it was my everything. My ex- I was in school at the time, so all my exercise books had Site B, DX, Tag and Release, everything <laughs> from the marketing. Um, caution tape doodles everywhere and barbed wire and stuff like that but by the time Jurassic Park 3 came out I was in my last year of high school about to graduate and I don't I don't remember at all seeing it I don't think it was till much later where I actually went back and revisited it not not through well I suppose yes maybe losing interest in the franchise and just life and work got in the way and sort of um perspectives changed but you were um you were at the age you said before you uh, were old enough, and this was the first in the franchise you seen at the cinemas or the theaters. So yeah, I was um, eight when Jurassic Park three came out. I was I remember 
my first big introduction to it was um, the the Lost World and Jurassic Park collector set, and they just said, uh, and they said like the stay tuned for the first look of or for your first look at Jurassic Park three, and it was that teaser, and it had like this really dark stormy sky over an island, and the lights just kept flashing, and you. Uh, you're, it was it was very reminiscent for the uh, excuse me the Lost World trilogy uh, not Lost World <laughs> the uh, Lost World teaser trailer where something had survived mm-hmm, yeah that one and it was really disappointing when the movie came out honestly <laughs> I was like what is this kitty time playtime bullshit <laughs> yeah it sort of it set the tone even though it was a um, sort of like a sneak peek. And really, a teaser defined uh, as a definition of a teaser, just not showing anything, just the camera going through that dark jungle and showing some dark shots at night time. Mm-hmm. It sort of it sort of set a tone that unfortunately the film couldn't live up to. But um, so once you see it in the cinemas, that was because <laughs> I, I, a lot even for a long time, I, and even, it goes with a lot of the big trilogies. You got the first one being the um, people's favourite, then it sort of declines after that. Not always. I mean, for a lot of times, uh, I mean, the the second one tries to surpass the first. Sometimes it succeeds, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Empire Strikes Back was succeeded. The Lost World, depending on who you ask. (laughs) For us, us, I think it was uh, definitely our Empire Strikes Back, not Mm -hmm. the Jurassic Park movies, but unfortunately... Others don't agree. Yeah, it's it's more so. Um, I think as time's gone by, and it's not it's not. Well, you do have you still do have those fans out there that'll the troll, but it's more accepting now that to how you can have your own opinion on each each of the films. Like, um, the original Star Wars people for a long time would have put that as their favorite just because it's the first one they've seen in theaters, knowing that um. Empire is probably the better made film and better story. Jurassic Park's no different. Where a lot of people would have seen that originally in in the theaters. Um, personally, I come on with the Lost World, which is why I think it's my favorite still. Um, same for the book. I read the Lost World book before Jurassic Park novel, but that's um, we've talked about that in the past. And even even now in the last last few years, especially being in some of the larger fandoms and that oh, largest groups for Jurassic Park franchise. Um, a lot of people now are coming forward and saying how they like Jurassic Park 3 better in the franchise. I don't know if that's just because Jurassic World and Fallen, King- and Fallen Kingdom have come out and they're not really hitting some fans' tastes and they're going back to the original trilogy and re-watching. And, or, like you, you, they just seen it first in cinemas and that's the emotional tie to the, tri- to the franchise they have. That, that uh, thought process has been around for a long time, the and it's been actually a long, long and hard debate. Who, I mean, which is the better sequel? And then, of course, Jurassic World came around, and everybody's like, "Oh, this is the best sequel." Yeah, and that's the thing. You got fourteen years. It's, it's the same argument with um, people that's when Jurassic World hit, and even now, Fallen Kingdom, you still get some. And I'm, I was in the boat with Jurassic World, especially how the score didn't really hit. Um, wasn't really a fan of it. But I can understand that it's new. It's something you've only heard a few times, whereas the first three movie scores, especially, you've had 14-plus years of having it played over and over again and just becoming very familiar with uh, with what's come before. So I understand, and I'm not going to go out and say to someone, well, no, nah, this is crap, because um, you like it. It's it's your your taste. It's what you like, and that's fine. There's, there's a lot of fans of the franchise and they like this different aspects of it but oh i will <laughs> yeah <laughs> I've, I've been known to leave a small novel saying why the lot the lost world is the superior sequel hmm. yeah and i there's there's definitely issues uh we've talked about across the whole franchise where each of the films do have their issues some are made better than the others but it's um sometimes you just you just block out issues your favorite films have and just write it down as oh well it was fun or this didn't happen behind the scenes or something else but 
Um, but Jurassic Park for especially, I think, for the most part and for the majority, is definitely seen as as the worst. And whether it's whether it's they dislike the film itself, maybe a couple of the characters that we'll definitely get to, or maybe one major scene we're going to get to as well that just as as the meme goes, ruin their childhood. So <laughs> we're um we're gonna we're gonna dig into it anyway. I, I think the um, important thing is just to go in and have a look at it open-mindedly. We know, and we'll discuss as we go, sort of, um, the -the behind-the-scenes stuff, some of the big issues they had behind the scenes going forward. And it's just, as as you are saying before with Jaws 3, it's just, it's a B-movie. It's only 90 minutes long, so it's going to be the shortest of our podcast runs. And it's just pretty much scene-to-scene, not with not a lot happening in between, so... Mm -hmm. But um, when, oh, when, getting into um, the trailer itself, <laughs> when we started the Lost World Minute, we sat and watched the uh, the first trailer, and it was a little bit uh, weird, and it wasn't the best to listen to, so we sort of just go through and break the trail down a little bit here and not actually sit here and watch it. And so we watched the official trailer, number one. There's a few trailers out there, including the international one, that all sort of have different takes, but they all seem to open with the same... Uh, beginning of Paul Kirby meeting Dr. Grant Knox, telling him that he's uh, charred the plane to fly over Isla Sauna and he is willing to fund his research to get him on board. So straight up we have an introduction here, heading back to Sauna and Dr. Grant's back. Which I think is honestly one of the major reasons why a lot of people like Jurassic Park 3 over the Lost World is simply because they couldn't un- they couldn't see Ian Malcolm in a lead role and Sam Neill already having had the lead role and being of course a lot of people's favorite character in the first place mm. was able to fulfill fill the shoes to, so to speak yeah they were he was to some people more believable as a the lead character mm. yep yep and i suppose we'll merge in here too i was going to bring up later with the character introductions but we here we have um we have grant back so we know we know he's one of the returning cast. Unless you're eagle-eyed, you're not going to pick up that Ellie's back. Um, unless, of course, she was on the poster <laughs> or something. But um, she does have a single line later on that it's sort of hard to notice it's her. But um, we also get an introduction here of uh, Paul Kirby as well coming in. Now, I post Jurassic Park 3, of course, Wild Hogs. And um, I was watching Sahara on TV last night. And films like that where he just plays the... Not doofus, but just sort of like the the bumbling guy, um, William H. Macy. I, I haven't watched any of his serious stuff. I'm not really a fan of serious films like that. But, um... is, I will say, and I think I said this earlier at some point, in one of our previous episodes, an amazing actor. Hmm. And I think that he plays a doofus so well on here. I mean, it's just... Yeah, how, how the guy has so much range. He, he can go from the most believable idiot <laughs> to the most believable asshole. Yep. And I'm probably probably pushing the censors at this point now, <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. But on the show Shameless uh, is a show I've been watching for about nine years now. It's been on his ninth season. Um, he plays the he plays the negligent father of this south side chicago uh family and he just is the most son of a gun you could ever imagine i mean he's just rotten Hmm. he's so believable as it yeah and i could imagine too in not not having a look at his imdb or anything but by 2001 he would have had some serious roles beyond his belt um, and having his name on the post for Jurassic Park 3 would have definitely got some attention. As well as his partner, Amanda Kirby, which, again, Tia Leone, I'd, the only thing I'd ever seen her in before this, and or before this was definitely the original Bad Boys, but after it was uh, Deep Impact, and they're probably the only two films I've seen with her in. Um, both... Tia Leone, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple things of her in... Um... She's good in Tower... Uh, no, <laughs> I won't say that. Because Tower House was a comedy, and... I mean, she, there are movies I've seen her in that she's good at, though. I mean, I just can't name any right now, because they're not notable yep. to me. 
but there are movies that she's done that I've seen her in. And I also like her as an actress. I don't think she has as much range as Macy. But she's not a terrible actress. She's just stuck in a terrible script with this movie. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Like, she's got... Um, there's the current series playing out there. The, I think she's the president or second in command or something. Like, mm-hmm. she's, she's had a couple of major TV roles, so she can she can act. And even, even going back to the original Bad Boys, it was more, I'm guessing... Back then, just having that that female, the attractiveness for the guys. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, as you as you said, like there's there's a lot of issues with the character here. But again, I put down the script, and some people just don't get who she's trying. She's just trying to be that stay at home mum that's um, that doesn't have much of an idea. Especially later on when Paul t- <laughs> Paul mentions she's totaled three cars in three years. It's just. It's it's the character she's playing here. I think she does a fine job at playing that character, but it's just a character mm-hmm. that grinds on a lot of people's um, grinds. Yeah. So, but we'll get I to think that. I the screaming. Yeah. I mean, she's just kind of stuck as the screaming blonde of the movie, and it. I mean, she's a she plays a lot of smart, intelligent characters, and then, frankly, the writing is beneath her for this. Hmm. Yeah, and there's one scene here. We cut to them when they're telling Grant to get a fund his research where in the film itself she sits there and has the line about having the first two tickets on the commercial space shuttle to the moon where it just it's not really delivered very well but but we'll definitely get onto that as the film progresses in the trailer here we see the plane flying towards sauna but we've mentioned it before and it's going to come up again during the film just how using shooting locations from previous shots in the franchise we see here and see in most of the trailers and even the TV spots of this plane approaching Issel Sauna, yet it's approaching the exact same places where the helicopter approached Nublar in Jurassic Park that you got that rock outcrop just offshore and the valley it flies into and the Jurassic World done the same thing with the ferry approaching Nublar where it's clearly the same coast as the barge at the start of the Lost World Approaching that sauna. Actually, oh wait, oh yeah, I was gonna say it's not the same part as the, uh, it's not the same shot as the first and third movie. It's the same as the Lost World. You're yeah, right. yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of lot of times like that, and we'll get, I'll touch on that a little bit more when we get to the TV spots. But we get a nice shot of some of the animals out grazing, and Grant looking out the window. And my God, he'd forgotten. Just sort of, again, bringing back that fact that he hasn't seen or heard any of any of these animals since Jurassic Park, even though the Lost Worlds happened. Um, and we see one of the pilots, and they mention the landing, scri- landing strip, and Grant's all nut. We can't land here, and then all hell break, all hell breaks loose, and they crash. We get a quick glimpse of the new dinosaur, the uh, the, the spine or the frill on the back of the spinosaur as the plane hits it, <laughs> and um, yeah, the plane crash. <laughs> so we know we sort of set up here. We know exactly how they end up on the island, whether. Well, it shows. It shows. It doesn't show them la- actually landing, getting out, and doing all that, but just shows them colliding with the the large animal and crashing. But um, we get the cut to the group walking towards a new building that we haven't seen before, and some shots of the hatchery inside. And we get a voiceover describing that it's a place man has um, where man has tampered tampered with nature, and um, something unexpected has evolved. And we get the raw through the jungle which we've we've brought up before this roar it's the one where the uh just after the tyrannosaur pushes the explorer off the concrete moat yeah. hill yeah, it is. what have you and probably not the best of the tyrannosaur roars or vocalizations in the franchise but um and can i just point out how much i hate the terror has evolved tagline because it for years it it made fans think oh the raptors evolved yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not how evolution works. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's sort of it's it's because it's saying it as the um you hear the Tyrannosaur and we get the whole is a T Rex now it sounds bigger and then we get the, again a shot of the new Raptors um, causing havoc and attacking and yeah it's just that whole evolved thing and as you said a lot of people thinking that it's not a subspecies anything from the Raptors it's just not the Raptors we've seen before have evolved in four short years. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get we'll get to some other issues later, especially when we get to the TV spots with just some of the dialogue that's said um, over the over the footage. Just 
again, probably leading fans or leading people down one road where it's not the case at all. But it's here we get, well, the, we see the new Raptors sort of attacking and doing their thing. We get Ellie's voice saying that they can talk to each other. And uh, we see an animal stampede again with the Raptors out, out in the open and running. And we get the voice over again. It's just not a walk in the, another walk in the park, which, well, of course not, because it's not on Nubla. <laughs> <laughs> It was, again, another terrible tagline. I mean, this movie had, like, five different taglines, and they were all worse than, than the next. Mm, yeah. And again, when we get the TV spots here in a minute, we'll get to them. But we get a few quick cuts of some of the action scenes. Uh, we get full shots of the Spinosaur, the Pteranodons in the aviary, and um, and Billy's voiceover that the Raptors are setting it, or set a trap. And then uh, cut to the new logo, Jurassic Park 3. We've got the Spinosaur in the middle instead of the uh, Trenosaur, and the slashes in the title as well, to signify free and not a number. We we talked at the start of uh, The Lost World about the, the new logo for The Lost World, how personally I liked it, just that old um, stamped in rock, where here we've got brushed silver in the background and bright reds, and um, a pretty new-looking logo, which you could almost say maybe signifies there's going to be a new park or a new idea of a park or something. Um, David, Jurassic Park free logo. <laughs> Thoughts? Now, I might be in the minority here, but I liked it. I mean, it's not the classic logo, no, and I do love that classic logo, but I thought it was bold that they put the Spinosaurus on it. And I love the three claw marks, especially when we see it at the end of the trailer here, mm. where the claw marks just go, and it sounds like they have like a nail on a chalkboard sound. <laughs> where it's just scra- scratching the claw marks into the um, sign there. And I, thought, I always thought that was cool. Hmm. Yeah, and it's especially if you go if you go into sort of behind the scenes and a lot of stuff, Spielberg was pushing the idea pretty heavily that, uh, yes, we've had the Trenosaur. We had the Trenosaur in the first movie. We had two of them in the second movie. We're not going to have three or four of them <laughs> in the third movie. We're going we're gonna to introduce a new big bad... And it's going to come on the scene and just decimate what we've seen before, and and that's sort of what it does. And here in the logo, you see we've got the, the Spinosaur, or early on the Baryonyx that um, is in this in this logo, and it sets the sets the tone straight away that this isn't going to be about the Tyrannosaurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that's interesting you mentioned that because the first time I actually ever saw the logo was with the Baryonyx. It was. I have the Jaws, the 2001 Jaws DVD that had um, that had the Lost World and Jurassic Park Collector's Edition commer- er, advertisement on there. Mm-hmm. And when it mentioned Jurassic Park 3, it shows the Baryonyx logo. Mm. Now that, remind me, that logo, that was, uh, it was more like the, um, the original Jurassic Park one had the yellow background and not the red? No, it was, it was um, more... I, no, I can't remember. I was, I think it was, I remember it was silver still. Okay. There's so many but fan versions of logos out there. What's that? <laughs> There's so many fan versions of logos out there. <laughs> it's hard to. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't remember what the color of the background was, but I do remember it, it was silver with the baryonyx. Yep. yep. All right. So, um, also just going into this here as well um, that was the uh, the trailer number one, there is an international trailer that goes for about two minutes that shows a lot of the uh, a lot of the same stuff as well, just some extended scenes but um, the trailer I just looked at was the first trailer for the Jurassic Park 3 um, on YouTube as well there's a seven minute or seven and a half minute compilation of trailers and TV spots that uh, come out for Jurassic Park 3 and although all the uh, the trailers start with that Paul Kirby dialogue of um, mentioning the plane over sauna. The TV spots don't. Most of them start. You still see the plane approaching the island, but they don't. You don't get that Isla sauna name drop, which could be the first the first little hint that he looking at these TV spots. We're going back to Nublar and not sauna, um, especially with that that sort of iconic approach to Nublar we've seen in Jurassic Park. Um, and we also get mentions by the voiceover um, mentioning 
they thought it was abandoned or we were um, in this abandoned place um, thinking that there was no animals and sort of dialogue like that, which is really hinting back to the park, the ruined park. We're going back to that sort of area, um, especially when a lot of the stuff we're seeing isn't anything we're seeing uh, or familiar from the Lost World or Jurassic Park in, in reality as well. But we're seeing the hatchery, we're seeing the, uh, the lab itself. Um, and fences. We see the Spinosaur crashing through the fence as well, which we know from, or we, we think we know from the Lost World. We've never seen any fences apart from that one that surrounded the worker village, so... Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the foliage didn't help either. I mean, they went back to Kauai for uh, most of the on-location shots. Mm. And it just... There was no redwoods, and there was, like, the huge identifier for the Lost World was the redwoods. Yep. You know? So of course I mean it's people go in and see this and like wait what this doesn't look like it, the easiest sauna we saw in the last movie mm. you know yeah and I think definitely when we uh, we get shots of the lab here too which when we get to the that in the film um, being the re the reused set for, of the operations builder from the Lost World um, even just the plantings around that building um, in the Lost World it was sort of more overgrown the palm trees were high um, to sort of hide the village from from above but in Jurassic Park 3 especially when we get the shot down from the valley um, needing the village to be up above above the surrounding forest and then when we get down there a lot of it's shrubs like head high shrubs and that sort of thing you don't have those high palm trees and the same sort of look as what we had around the operations building whether it's just a different set decorator or or what have you but it's probably nothing it's probably looking too deep into it <laughs> But it just it just sort of looking at this and trying to forget what we know from the film itself. It's a lot of these TV spots is really it really feels like they're trying to say we're going back to Isla Nublar and not Sauna. But there's there's half a dozen of them, and I think lastly too we'll discuss briefly. We 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 talked in the whole lead up for Fallen Kingdom and how much stuff they were showing in the trailers in the TV spots and how we sort of really didn't like seeing some things, especially once we've seen the film and just how much it gave away. Everything, every twist, every plot point, everything from <laughs> Jurassic Park 3 is in these trailers. There's no... Looking at it now and just going back and remembering sort of some of these marketing, the, the trailers and that, going into the film, there's nothing that's not... Apart from maybe the, the boat hitting the rocks and that at the start of the film... You see, you see, you know what's in the bird cage. You know the spinosaur is there. It's going to hit the plane. Um, Amanda in the lab, looking at the raptor through the embryonics chamber, like all that stuff. All, all it that even stuff. shows the raptor jumping at her. Yeah, it shows you the jump scare. That's like the one. That's like the number one thing you don't show. <laughs> yep, the raptor running across and getting Udesky in the back, like. Every everything is shown in that in those TV spots and trailer. Well, they were doing this back in 2001, which I didn't realise. Because <laughs> I'd have to... Yeah, because back then, I think... I remember The Lost World I was seen in theatres, like Titanic was 97 as well. <laughs> and then after that, I don't think... I can't recall seeing any other movie in theatres until maybe uh, Resident Evil, the original one in 2003 or two. So it was definitely a long spell there where I never even got to the movies. And by then, it still would have been renting one on VHS every now and then. Obviously, seen The Matrix and um, some of those early 2000s films that probably don't need to be mentioned because <laughs> they're so bad. But um, this definitely fit in with, with that sort of era of filmmaking. Um, but that's um, that's all I've got on the trailer for Jurassic Park 3. Anything else you want to mention on that? No, I think we're good. All right, uh, just before we get out of here, going forward with the podcast, we're going to stick to the two-episode-a-week format like we did for the Lost World Minute, with uh, no real news coming out of the Jurassic Park franchise going forward just because the film's so f the next film's so far away. Uh, if we do get new figures and that sort of stuff in, we will discuss at the start of the episodes, but for the most part, we'll be just focusing on Jurassic Park 3. Having a look, we might look at some of the games that come out as well. I, I've only got one, and I don't have a console to play it, so that's, <laughs> that's going to be a brief discussion, but... Um, We'll just focus on the episodes themselves, so they'll be probably, or well, the minutes themselves, we might be 10, 15 minutes runtime. Once we start getting in the film and have some more stuff to discuss, they might be a little bit longer, but um, 
yeah, we won't be doing so much of the 45 minute or hour plus episodes like we did for the Lost World, just uh, just because there's not as much content out there to discuss, especially before the uh, the minute itself. But but yeah, so we will. Um, this this will be the only episode for this week, and then next week we'll be back with uh, the start of uh, Jurassic Park Three in the first two minutes. Before we do go, Patreon plug. The Patreon is up over at Jurassic Minutes on Patreon. If you uh, like what we do and want to support us going ahead, um, head over to Patreon, check it out. For just a buck a month, you can uh, donate to the podcast. And um, we've got bonus shows over there. The second bonus episode went up this past week, so uh, keep an eye out over there for them. They'll be Patreon only. We did release the first episode on the uh, main podcast feed last week just to um, give a bit of an example of what we're doing over there. But, uh, yeah, so if, if you consider it, go over there and have a look and please support the uh, podcast if you can. David, that's us for this week. Next week we uh, start the film. Yeah. If you want to get a hold of us, you can email us at lostworldminute.com. The main website is jurassicminutes.wordpress.com and you can find the Lost World Minutes and Jurassic Minutes over on Facebook. The uh, pages there. David, where are we on Twitter and Instagram? Uh, Twitter, we are at Jurassic Minute. Uh, Instagram is the Jurassic Minutes Podcast. Some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. This is how you make dinosaurs? No. This is how you play God. If we split up, I'm going with you guys. Dinosaurs lived 65 million years ago. What is left of them is fossilized in the rocks. And it is in the rock that real scientists make real discoveries. Now, what John Hammond and InGen did at Jurassic Park is create genetically engineered theme park monsters. Nothing more and nothing less. Uh, are you saying that you wouldn't want to get onto Isla Sorna and study them if you had the chance? No force on Earth or Heaven. Get me on that island. You desky. Hello? Charlie! Charlie! Hello? Charlie, take the phone to mommy now! Take the phone to mommy! It's the it's the dinosaur there! Okay.